Yeah, you were fine. You were fine. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Today's Restaurant News Chapter 1 Networking Group. We are a group of vendors in the industry, and we are here to help each other grow our businesses and to help any restaurant owner, manager, or chef to, uh, if they have a problem or an issue that they can't seem to solve, we invite you to bring it to us and we can try to help you. We've got hundreds of years of experience amongst us. And uh, if you'd like to attend one of our meetings, give us a call at 561 620 8888 or go on our website trnusa.com and if you'd like to see the entire meeting or show it to a friend you can go to our YouTube page at today's restaurant um, as I was mentioning the this company that is best known for being in the POS field, uh, Aldelo, which, which happens to be the, the, the name of the company, uh, no one's heard you know, of it. When I, when I, I was just, somebody just clicked on coming in late. When I was in the army, we used to go to classes, and in the army, if you're in a room and an officer walks into the room, the sergeant usually, you know, yells, Tan Hut, and everybody stands up. And then the officer will say, okay, you know, how do you sit down? Well, a lot of these classes, people fell asleep. So the guy who was given, the sergeant who was given the class, he said, everybody who's awake, don't listen to what I'm going to say next. And he yelled, Tan Hut. And three guys who were sleeping stood up. So I want to come up with something we could do here for people who come late. Let's we'll think about it. Anyhow, Adelo is uh, <laughs> uh, it's a POS company, and I'm sure you all have heard uh, uh, over the last week or so so much press about artificial intelligence. It's all over the news. In fact, in between the meetings today, the Congress is trying to get a bipartisan bill to prevent AI from causing a nuclear strike. So it, this is real. Um, but bringing it back down to earth, uh, Aldelo is one of the first companies to offer AI, and what they're doing is, let's say you have a restaurant and you're cre or you're a new restaurant and you're trying to create a menu, and you have to sit down and t type out, you know, uh, turkey plate, hamburger, whatever you're putting on. The AI is going to have the information, and when you write the the letters H A M, hamburger will appear on your screen with different options, like hamburger with uh, with fries, hamburger with ketchup, whatever the options are. And this way, you can create a menu much quicker than you could manually. And the interesting part about the program is, the more information that gets put into it, the more choices it will come up with. And I don't, uh, it's not clear in the article whether the choices that will be available are a compilation of all of their customers or just for that restaurant. And what I'm looking at, I'm thinking perhaps if somebody's creating a menu and they want to put on the menu uh Buffalo burger, blah, blah, blah. The AI eventually will have information to say to you, don't put that on the menu because only 3% of sales are in Buffalo burgers. So it's it's gonna it's going to it's gonna advance a lot further down the line. 
Uh, so what do you guys see the future of AI in restaurants and in your own business? Uh, of course, we see it in robotics. So that's Darren's, that's Darren's baby. But uh, so what do you think? Has anybody seen that Will Smith movie? Yeah. I've, I've been actually asking it a lot of questions. I've been actually on it and uh, asking it a lot of questions about uh, different consulting questions to see how much it knows about food service. And so far, it really doesn't have a lot of common sense when it comes to food service um, common sense. Um, it, it, it can't really determine the difference between uh, the different types of restaurants. And so it, it actually gives some bad advice when it comes to, um, let's say, a high-end restaurant versus, versus a um, fast food restaurant. If you try to ask it, for instance, about putting, let's say, the burger on um, a bison burger on a, on a, uh, a high-end restaurant, it may tell you not to do it. And and it doesn't take into consideration. Uh, it may take into consideration your location, but it might may not take into consideration that you're trying to do something for your location that's not there yet. That, yeah, all that you're trying to do. Yeah, also, this isn't really. I mean, there's different flavors of AI. This is very rudimentary AI, and it's just literally pulling from a database that people have typed in, meaning all of their customers, right. to create these options. Right. A true AI would anticipate, "Hey, here are your ingredients. What are options I could make out of this?" That would be a more. Darren, true when you say that, it's the kind of AI that triggers on keywords and exactly, hundred percent, kind, of, kind of like the way all these uh, recruiting platforms work. Yep. Yeah, because the problem with that sort of, I, I don't consider that to be true AI. Me either. <laughs> that's, just data, that, that's just data crunching. Yep. They're, they're collecting a bunch of data and spitting stuff out. Yeah. yeah I'm uh, more like it true AI answer. would have you input your ingredients and come up with options. Yeah, so, menus. you know, here, here's my question. You know, there's people who, depending on your brand and your style and how you want to position yourself in the marketplace, Kind of like John, what you were talking about, the difference between fast food or fine dining, whatever. You know, the the way menus are written, you know, there's a lot of varieties. You know, some people will do a name. They'll do a detailed description of the item. Other people do a name and they'll just give you a list of key ingredients. So how does this AI, how is AI, quote unquote, going to determine style feel uh, connection to your brand if it's just triggering off of data. I mean, there's there's a ton of, sub, you know, is AI ready to be that subjective? That would be my immediate question. I think it, I think it's, uh, it's so, When when the Congress is worried about it coming up with some kind of a nuclear accident, uh, and Elon Musk warning everybody about it, it's something to be considered. I think I think there might be just different versions of it that we're not aware of because the one that I'm using that that at least that I'm using that's online. It seems to me no different than a Google that you can speak with, and and you're getting a lot of data that comes back, and yeah, it's it's just regurgitating the the Google search type stuff. Maybe there's something that that they're using that I'm not getting to, but I'm I'm not able to find anything more. I even asked it, is there a different type of AI? Um, I just typed <clears> it in just now and. Um, it's it's not giving me any information on that. Yeah. Well, what kinda... they're referring to as AI now is just data, you know, processing data. The first one was Watson from IBM, if you remember right, on Jeopardy. And it just purged all the history, you know, went through everything and it was able to quickly find answers. But again, that's all database driven. So it's all grabbing data. Um, the, the new AI is supposed to learn and adapt. And that that's what that's what 
Congress is fearing is an AI that could literally learn and adapt and how to do things, um, which now you're into the Terminator stages of what we would call AI. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer. I mean, as computers get more and more powerful, there's more and more they can do. So they, can, yeah, they can't really that. think like people think they can, they can just basically take what they've learned and, and provide information based on what they've learned. I'm going to yeah, ask, I'm going to ask Jeff, because Jeff, well, you missed the beginning of this. Al Dello has come up with a, a feature now using AI to create menus. Are you familiar with it? It just came out. I don't know whether you, you, uh, no, I do not know, but, uh, we've been looking for, uh, people that can create menus, uh, especially for restaurants. I have a guy for you if you need one, Jeff. Yeah, we could, we could use it because you know, what happens is that when we get involved with uh, individual restaurants and we can't modify their, uh, their menus in a way that they need it, especially with the cash discount programs that are out because they have, for them, they have to, um, have a new, brand new menu that, that actually states the cash discount. And it's confusing when the, the customer comes up and finds out that they're getting a cash discount, they're being charged a little bit more, but the merchant's being charged nothing. Yeah, I have, I have two chefs that can do it for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, the one of the, that's one of the things. I mean, it's going so fast, and not every merchant or the bigger merchants want nothing to do with it. It's smaller merchants that <clears throat> feel they can get away with it. They're talking more so the AI, uh, the all the new AI technology that's happening. Like we're we're using some that voice that. is coming from myself. I apologize, I'm Josh. <laughs> I'm sorry, it, it, we're using it. Uh, the ventriloquist. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'll get I'll get in the screen. Oh, we're <laughs> how is everyone doing? I'll get home on this day. We're we're using we're yeah. getting involved in some AI information uh recently to create cold call lists and uh different things like that, but the, the AI technology is it's going faster than anyone can 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 get a hold of it. And it's it's uh, it's doing it. a lot of things one week and then it's doing co completely different things the next week. Uh, just to how the technology is working and how it's being built and um, how it's it's kind of learning uh, as you ask it questions as you ask it uh, to do certain uh, uh, things for you it's 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 kind of understanding and learning what you're asking and what you want it to do for you and it's, and it's giving you different options and instead of you asking for adoptions it's offering you options it's kind of crazy it's uh like we're we're just now kind of getting involved in it and it's it's doing a lot of cool things for us, and it's also allowing us to open up our eyes into different ways we can help our merchants and our, our accounts. Anybody else have any comments? How do you how do you think it's going to affect restaurants? It's already it's, we, it's already taking over uh, different jobs, different waitresses, waiters. Uh, some, I think there's a there's a, a chicken place uh, in Davy, uh, Chong Man Chicken, and it has a robot waiter, and um, and the waiter is going around and and it's kind of like a moving kiosk, but the the new versions of it are now going up to uh, merchant uh, diners that are sitting down to eat and basically offering uh, items, and when you select something, it's it's. Like in a kiosk today, it'll ask for upcharges. Oh, would you like to add a plate of French fries to it? Would you like to add a plate of onion rings to it? And it's it's doing that without being asked to do it. It's, right. it's absolutely it's just going through its own menu and saying, hey, these will go well with what you just ordered. And, and I think that fine dining restaurants might get involved in that when it comes to uh, wine selection or beverage selection or liquor. Uh, hey, you ordered the steak. Well, the the these drinks go along with that steak. I think that it's kind of moving in that direction, where it's it's gonna take away a lot of the waitress jobs, the register jobs, but it's gonna it's gonna add that more efficient and and faster uh, uh, ordering service that 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 it's gonna offer in the future. That's basically what we're we're seeing today in different restaurants and different uh, ways that's being used in that in that industry. 
Yeah, there was there was an article in link on LinkedIn the other day. The first McDonald's opened up fully automated. Yeah. No empl no employees up in I think it was in Illinois uh, recently. Uh, everything's robotic. You know, you're speaking into a, a, a you speak into the speaker and it processes your order. It makes your order robotically, and yeah. delivers it to you robotically. And you know, there's not one employee in the whole building. Yeah. Like, Evan, doing... is that cashless? I, I don't cash? know. I didn't read the whole. I honestly didn't really get into all that, but it was pretty interesting <laughs> to you know, kind of where things have gone so fast. And obviously, AI has to be prevalent in that kind of environment. For it to function properly another example of that uh sorry to interrupt an example my, my brother and my sister-in-law just went on a cruise uh during the holiday uh, uh, last christmas and there's a bar inside the cruise ship that's just a robot and you go and you order your drink at the front counter and it makes your drink and hands it to you and they charge your room for it and yeah. that, that was the first instance that i heard of, of something like that being used holy crap yeah. was, that on the, was that on the carnival I think it was on Carnival, yeah. It was. The one. I actually worked on that one. Yeah, that one there. That one came out of Italy. It's it's actually just a plug and play uh, <clears throat> bar now. Yeah, it's, you can actually just buy them right from them. It, it was one of uh, the the companies I worked with, and um, now after they use the consultants and they use all the uh, companies, they just make them, and now they just sell them to a certain size, and they just plug them in, and they're yeah. ready to go. Yeah. My question would be like with the meat, you know, mid to high end restaurants and stuff, when you have people that go in there and they like, maybe they're allergic to dairy or maybe they're allergic to peanuts and stuff, how well the AI would respond to all that kind of stuff. I don't know a lot about it. So that'd be a great use of AI to be able to give you the options on the menu that meet your dietary restrictions. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people out there with allergies, uh, several that I know, and and you know if they if they eat certain things, then they're in you know they're in trouble. Well, they'd probably do a better job at at that than the actual waiter would do because they hardly ever know what they're talking about. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's that's the thing. I would it's, love to see it come into the design side. I'd love to see it actually start to do the actual design because. If if it could actually do the design, it could actually do it faster and Catch do it better than, than mistake. most of the designers, including myself. I mean, it would it would really still, put us out of business. I, but I, I still think from from the standpoint of the consumer, uh, there might be certain things that you want to do with to, with the consumer with AI, but uh, there's still you, you still have people that want to talk to people. You still have people that might want advice when you sit down to a table, especially in a better restaurant where the, the restaurant uh, has a variety of products and side dishes and all these other things that could be recommended. Um, it, you know, the AI is, is uh, it's, it's got one tube of, the, of information, in it, but it doesn't talk like a human being. And... Uh, it's good for the lower end restaurants. It's not good for middle end and upper end restaurants because you still have uh, waiters and waitresses that are there. I mean, who's going to come over and give you a glass of water when the water's you, there's no more water on the table? Well, my response to that would be AI is kind of designed to learn that and learn from that. That's what's kind of cool and scary about it at the same time where all you really have to do is kind of teach it one or two things, and then it will take that information and create different uh, responses from it, create different um, ways of looking at it, ways of understanding it. And it's, 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 it's a very, I, I don't like robots. I look at it like, you know, what movie where a robot or AI was created and it didn't end well for the humans. So that's, that's mm -hmm. kind of how I go forward with it. But this technology is coming and there's no stopping it. And everyone that's creating it is going harder and harder. And they're yeah. not, they're not basically, they're not taking any of the um, defects of it and, and saying, Hey, let's slow down. They're like, let's just keep going and, and see if we can get it. You know, if we could bypass those, like it's just, it's, it's, it's nonstop. 
Yeah, Jeff, and to answer your question, it enhances the waiter or server. Like, there's no way a server can know exactly what wines pair best. It's like having a sommelier at your restaurant that can pair the wines for you at the cost of a software package. You know, same thing, you know, knowing what allergies are. Okay, my wife has a soy allergy. Here's what's on her menu that you can actually eat. You know, because, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're narrowing down. And at that point in time, your servers are becoming more efficient and able to focus more on customer service than on trying to run back to the kitchen. Hey, what doesn't have soy in it? You know, so it, it's an efficiency thing by the AI. That's the biggest advantage. Well, AI can do a lot of things, but it can't give you a picture of Peter Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best line yet, Jeffrey. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> Peter, yeah, did um, you uh, hear that? Well, we, I, I will tell you this, that everything is wireless now. Everything. Peter everything. is muted. We, we went, we, we've, been, we've been going to hair salons and restaurants and such, and everything <laughs> if, if everything can be done at the table. Yep. Nothing nothing has to be done at the counter, the cash where the cash register is. It's amazing in some cases. And I was talking about how I didn't think it was going to work. I thought that it was going to be something that the consumer was going to be upset about. But they're not upset. They just want to be in, out, and get what they want. They couldn't care less. The younger generation of likes to avoid people. I mean, oh, I can yes. speak. I have two daughters in their 20s, and they would much prefer a kiosk to talking to a person. Oh, yeah. that's, we're, we're being asked uh, for individual table kiosks now. Yep. We're, we're, we're the, you know, we're, we're steering away from the, the full POS system to put at the cash register. They want these, they just want a payment terminal at the front desk yep. and then menus and all types of stuff at the table. Yeah, I was in Houston at a red bar restaurant we were at. They waiter just handed me a device, you know, to pay the bill. Yeah. You know, and that's you know they didn't leave them at every table, but when it was time for your checkout, they handed you to the device. You reviewed everything to serve if you want an email receipt, print receipt, etc. And everything was there. You tap your card on it, um, and you know use Apple Pay if you want. I mean, it was that that's where it's headed. Uh, my my first experience of that was in Dallas. I was there for a conference and. We stopped at a burger place uh, at the, one of the nights that we were there. And at the burger place, it was, it was like this well-known burger place in Dallas. You walk in. What a burger. No, no, it wasn't what a burger. I've had it <laughs> Better than that, okay. It, it was, it was, you walk in, there's a big kiosk, like at the front desk. There's no person there. Everyone there is working and cooking your food. There's a big kiosk there. You order your food, put your toppings, your sides, what uh, ketchup, mustard, anything that you want, any added, added extras. They, they print out your receipt, you pay for it, then they give you a number at the, from the actual machine. You go to your table, put the receipt on the table, and they bring you your food. There's really, that's the only interaction you have with any of the staff, <clears throat> them bringing you the food. And now restaurants are trying to use robots to do that, so there's no interaction at all. Yeah, but you so, see, I'll, I'll walk out of a place, like, including... Uh, including like different McDonald's if they don't have a kiosk that works properly and that has the options that I want. Like yeah. I'll go with, I'll go into McDonald's. Um, there's three different McDonald's within a, a close distance of me. And there's one McDonald's that has the options that, that I want on the kiosk and the other ones that don't. And I'll go to that one and I'll use that one that I want. Like, for instance, I can get a, a big breakfast at the one and I can get it the way that I want it. And the other one, I have to stand in line. And if I stand in line, sometimes I'll get somebody that comes up to the counter. Sometimes I won't. I'll walk out. And and I I'm going to give you. Yeah, excuse me. I'm going to get take videos. We're going to our national sales meeting in two weeks. And it's right here down in Florida. And I'm going to take a video of all of the vendors that are come that come to our sales meeting because we have a huge sales meeting. We got 60 offices coming down from all over the country. The, it is totally amazing the products that are being offered to us to offer to the merchants. And there's just so many products. And 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 from my standpoint, products that I saw a year and a half ago that I said they'll never work. Now we're being mainstay that this is what's being offered to the stores. 
uh, because the the bottom line on all of this is elimination of people. Yeah. I would they're say filling empty positions. Cooks, I don't think they're looking to eliminate you know, people. They're looking to fill positions. Yeah. They're just eliminating everything. <laughs> we have a, we have a, it's, a, 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 a what's it? Fel, it's a fel, Vietnamese, Vietnamese, a Vietnamese restaurant. restaurant. Now, they want if they want a key they want a what do they call a it? kiosk a big a station self serving kiosk self serving kiosk yeah I mean they don't even want to talk to anybody it's literally like we're doing the business end of it it's cheaper for them to buy that terminal and and install the software into that terminal that they're paying a monthly fee than to hire somebody to be at the front register yep uh, so they're looking at that and saying hey we're saving like a couple even if it's just a couple hundred dollars a couple thousand dollars. Uh, a hundred dollars a month, a thousand dollars a year. They're saving money by not hiring somebody and then using having this machine do it. And, and now, not dealing with all the drama. Yeah, well, that, that also well, like, they don't right? have to fire anybody. They don't have to deal with any mistakes. They don't have to deal with anything like that. But they're taking the job away. That's the other end of looking at it. Sure. Now there's there's uh, there's there's a lot of cool stuff that's being built now that restaurants are partnering up with each other in certain areas. I would say it. Um, turnpike uh, uh rest stations and uh there's a place called uh, uh world of beer and they don't serve food yeah. they they always open up in a location that's are, are surrounded by restaurants right and they're, they're trying to do these partner deals where they have a kiosk set up that has menu items from each of those restaurants so you can order a frosty from wendy's uh, a big mac from mcdonald's and the french fries from burger king Right. And you can order them separately off of one bill, sit at your table, and all three will be delivered to you. And and, and that's just kind of the, the the route that they're taking now. They're they're trying to do more of that, where they're they're partnering up with restaurants uh, to to do business with each other, yeah. rather than. Cappy, you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I, I I hear the concern and I see the concern from you guys um, on this matter of. I, AI taking jobs away from the HR side of things from what I've seen um, actually restaurants have been struggling the, since COVID mm -hmm. um, and with you know all the, the funding available from the government there's not a lot of workers especially for the lower end restaurants there's not a lot of workers that want to come in and make minimum wage when they can stay home and actually get more money so I don't I don't see that being a problem. I see that being a solution to a current problem that we have that the restaurant industry has. Um, and I I actually see that as being a development. Now, if the person really wants to, uh, I I see that as an evolution of jobs. So there's got to be somebody also manning and um, Super, supervising this a this bot this bots and the the AI making sure that everything is running smoothly. So it's just an evolution. It's just a change. I do. I am, in, you know, happy to hear that there, this is a solution for a restaurant because if they're saving a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars, whatever the case is, throughout the year on you know instead of spending it on somebody and they're getting more efficiency that means that they're selling more they're growing as a business and they're going to be utilizing more services it's just the growth for the economy agreed yeah i think the ai and and the the desktop uh consumer uh tablet on the table to ordering and paying it's going to allow more restaurants to have uh incentive systems inc incentive programs so if you come into a restaurant and, and you're a regular, you're going to build up points or whatever and, yeah. you know, you can get a reward. So it, it's got all kinds of different applications. Well, I think I look at it even from a different standpoint. Uh, I see all of this automation and cost cutting because the, uh, the people that own the buildings, the oh. people that are renting spaces are raising their rates raising their, their monthly fees to have those, the rent, yeah. the rent and the restaurants need to do something to, to eliminate yes, some of the, the costs of doing business at the restaurant. Oh, even food, food prices. Are I mean, up, yeah. when lot, I look into shopping centers and restaurants or small or re retail stores, they're going out of business because they can't afford the rent anymore. Well, necessity is the mother of invention. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, we don't have to go far. I live in plantation. There are pl uh, shopping centers that are popping up with these national oh, chains yeah. and the regular uh, shopping centers are losing vendors because they're not capable of doing all the things that the national groups are doing. Right. Well, they, they trust Einstein bagels to pay their rent more than the local bagel shop. Uh, that, that's we're noticing uh, that the franchise smoothie place is make is, is uh, they're guaranteed to get their money at the end of the month than the local place but there's they're just getting rid of a lot of local places a lot of local places are are having to to go which is exactly what the um what gabby was saying uh, finding not different ways of automation to help their business uh, save money and and grow uh without having to pay for any of those extras all right well i like that i don't think we've I don't think we've ended the discussion on this, but it would certainly brought up a lot of good points. And I do want to get to our intros for those of people who are watching who don't know who we are exactly. <clears throat> so I thank you for that com conversation. And Darren, you want to start us off with our intros? Sure. Good morning, everybody. Darren Gall, Tracy.net. We are a communications consulting and solution provider. What does that mean? We help you make the right choice when looking at your phone and internet services for restaurants, for small businesses, even for full-blown contact centers. There's a lot of options out there. We work with all the carriers. We help you make educated decisions, find the pain points, and find the best solution for your company within your budget. So if you haven't looked at a phone bill in a year or two, it's probably time you do. I'm sure we can help save you money. Our first consultation is always free. Again, that's Darren Gall at Tracy.net. Tracy is T-R-A-C-I.net. You can reach us at sales at Tracy.net or 800-881-8899. Great. Thank you. Uh, Dave McCall. Oh, Dave McAllister, I'm sorry. Yeah, either. I'll even call me whatever you want. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, Dave McAllister with BSG, Biozone Scientific Group. We uh, help restaurateurs and uh, operators uh, maintain their buildings as efficiently as possible uh, using devices that uh, employ UV light. Uh, we clean uh, ice machines, we clean uh, HVAC uh, equipment uh, and air. We remove odor from buildings and spaces, both um, transient and, um, and non-transient spaces. So, uh, we're, most of our products allow for a return on investment. We save customers money. We reduce hassles of the downtime of cleaning those machines. And we work with their current equipment uh, retrofitting with any any model or make. That's Dave McAllister with uh, BSG. Uh, my number 904-831-4945. And we work with all uh, chains throughout uh, the U.S. And hey. globally. Thank you. Thank you. Terry Ark. Good morning. Good morning. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Terry. I'm, I, uh, I'm the uh, owner of Creative Business Impressions, and I am a promotional products distributor. I like working with restaurants and helping them to develop uh, uh, different ways to keep your customer uh, thinking of you. So just as, as an, an idea. Did you bring a gavel? A gavel? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> I'm working on it though. I'm working on it. Um, just as a thought, um, great way to get customers to come back is if you, any uh, restaurant that has items that, where you can fill, like do a refill. Great way to get customers to come back is to you know maybe have have this to help to help um, them remember who you are and when they come back. Maybe you know give them fifty cents off or whatever on their next drink or whatever you know just different things that to fit into your cost. So I helped you come up with ideas based on your uh, <clears throat> restaurant uh, de uh, components. And um, I'm putting my information into the chat box. Hey, thank you, John Marinick. John Marinick, Marinick Food Service Consultants. Um, we design restaurants. And if you need a restaurant design, we're the people to go to. We just don't do just a restaurant design. We actually do the consulting with it. So when you need something designed, we also look at the overall costs and all involved and make sure that you're not putting too much money into um, things that you don't need. 
if we see something, we'll alert you to it. If you still say you want it, then uh, you still get what you want. It's just that we try to keep your money, um, you know, under wraps for you. So that way you don't spend too much uh, in areas that you don't need to. And uh, Jeff uh, already sent you those numbers. So uh, you should have those uh, direct message to you. Okay. Thank you. 954-817-1183. Right. <laughs> Thanks. TR and Terry. Good morning, Terry Appel, today's restaurant news, 27 years in the industry here, um, and what I do and what we do here in the office uh, is all work together with our um, associates and employees to find leads, to find the reason that there are two of us here from the same company like Chris and Kevin, uh, one adds something to the other. And for me, this leads report that I provide monthly is a full-time job for several people. So finding out what's coming in where and letting you know about it is, ours is second to none. I, I don't care where you go. I don't care. I'll, I'll argue it to the death. Uh, and what we're doing now is in the Georgia reports, we've started adding Alabama leads. If anyone in in uh, this group, well, there are some that are getting this report and you want the Alabama leads, also let me know. I will send them to you as well. Um, people in Georgia had asked for them, so we're trying to expand to other states. Um, this comes once a month on an Excel spreadsheet. You get the owner's name, phone number, email address, about where they're at in construction. Um, and I got a, a really good lead with about a 10,000 square foot, two story, uh, what's gonna be amazing um, lead the um, yesterday or the day before. Um, so, uh, these leads do work. They do bring in business. And if you want a sample, let me know. I'm happy to send it to you. 561-620-8888. Thank you. And I encourage you to use our private Facebook page. Uh, take a look at that every once in a while because, uh, we will post some leads there that are, that are hot. And it's also there for you to comment. So yes, please, I just put please. something up not that long ago. I'm about to put up a really good one today. So yeah. Okay, uh, Chris and Kevin. Good morning. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Kevin, you want to take it today? No, go ahead, Chris. Okay. We are strategic supply chain partners. Uh, we function as an outsourced purchasing department for small and market restaurant groups, renegotiating their mass distribution agreements and uh, accessing uh, manufacturer uh, direct deviated pricing and putting those programs into their uh, uh, purchasing uh, practices as well. Um, we typically save clients between 8 and 15 percent of what they're saving. Uh, we're headed towards doubling in size this year. Um, a lot of people are starting to finally see the benefit of what we do after a lot of hard work. Uh, some of the newest things we're working on, I think I mentioned a while ago, there, there's been a um, sriracha sauce uh, shortage throughout the country. We actually worked with a manufacturer to develop a, a sriracha sauce product which um, is uh, U.S. Foods looks like they're about to pick up, but we do things like that also uh, to help out the industry. Um, I can be reached at 985-778-1515. Kevin, you want to give them your number also? Sure. Well, I'd like just to add one thing real quick. You know, we were talking earlier about saving money uh, in the industry, how the rents have gone up for restaurants and they're, you know, make, they're being pushed to make decisions that are very difficult to make. In some cases, go out of business. You know, what we do... Uh, we average a little over a 10% save, and we can generally put together a new program for a restaurant company uh, within three to five months. There is nothing. So if somebody's buying a million dollars a year in food and we can save them 10%, $100,000 in savings, uh, there's probably not much on a P&L that somebody can have that kind of an impact 
on a business that fast. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, give us a shout, uh, 407-497-9495. And we are a free service. Uh, we don't charge a fee to our clients. Okay, thank you. John McCabe, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Th thank you very much for having us. I'm John McCabe. I'm with Carpet Johnny. We're a large manufacturer of frozen dessert equipment, including batch freezers for ice cream, gelato, and custard. Uh, we also have soft serve machines, as well as pastry equipment. And we uh, uh, distribute ESA display cabinets and carts for ice cream, gelato, and chocolate and pastry. Um, I can be reached for any time at 401-368-6406. Look forward to working with you on a frozen dessert program that could help bring profits to your uh, your restaurant. The uh, Having a successful frozen dessert program gets people to buy more coffee, gets more tips for your waiters and waitresses, and uh, brings more to your bottom line. So have a great day, and I'm here if you need me. Thank you. Thank you. John Bunn, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is John Bunn with the BH Bunn Company, third generation. We manufacture the bun string tying machines uh, from pork roast to rotisserie chicken to laundry to all sorts of things. Uh, one of the things in the restaurant industry, uh, more in the bakery line, we've tied bakery boxes since the 1930s. Uh, we recently had a customer who uh, was using third-party deliveries and their cakes were being taken out of the box and an empty box was being left at the door for delivery. They now put a tying machine at their stores and nobody can steal the cake. It's all secured. It's a knot that cannot be duplicated by hand. It's called a bun knot. Uh, our website is buntyco.com. You can email us at info at buntyco.com or you can call me at one 800 222 Bun, B U N N. We're located in Lakeland, Florida, in between Tampa and Orlando, almost smack dab in the middle of the state. Come see us if you're around. Thank you, guys. And John works on a TV station. He does weather on the weekends, pointing. I like how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Gabby with uh, Workside. We are a full service PEO. Uh, we do HR outsourcing, and what that means is that we can take care of uh, payroll, uh, payroll taxes, employee health benefits, workers' comp, 401k. We are also very good about um, bringing back capital to restaurants and small businesses for them to be able to inject it back to their business. Gabby with Worksite, 561-479-7474. Thank you. Peter, are you there? Good morning, uh, Peter Robinson. Very interesting, very interesting discussion about artificial intelligence. I'm hoping to replace myself with artificial intelligence. That would work great. I own Hudson Robinson Business Brokerage in Boca Raton, Florida. My website is HudsonRobinson.com. My phone number is 561-445-8198. If you have a business, a uh, restaurant, or other type of business, you are very welcome to call me. I'd be glad to have a discussion of the value of your business. And I look forward to having any discussion. Please call me if you would like to. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Krantz, good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jeff Krantz. I'm with CoCard Payment Systems. CoCard is a uh, national group. Uh, it started 25 years ago. We have uh, 60 offices across the country. They're all independently owned, but we work with each other. We, um, we because we're as big as we are, and, we, and when we started, uh, there's no, no one that can give you better rates than us. Um, we even beat every one of the banks out there. Um, First Data, a lot of our members are members because of first data because first data made an arrangement with us in the beginning before they became stubborn about rates we have the cheapest rates with first data uh, we work with uh, tesis we work with uh, mbc process mps processing and a lot of banks 
Uh, we offer all the equipment that you need in a lot of cases free of charge and our rate structure is extremely low. Um, we're personable. Uh, we like everybody and we hope everybody likes us. Uh, we are very service oriented and we will answer the phone. We will always get to the problem and fix that problem. And, and I'm from Brooklyn and it's really, I'm really not a bad guy. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Todd, good morning. Todd is not, Todd, you're on the mute. There, hey, can you hear me now? Oh, hi, everybody. This is Todd. I'm uh, uh, in a little background here. I've uh, been in the restaurant business, uh, not right now, but I did, I did start the uh, Quiznos food chain and um, back in what, 1981 or two along with a couple other restaurants I had. So anybody that wants um, another uh, I, opinion, I, I, it's in my blood and I need to express myself artistically as well as from a business standpoint. Food is an art form, as everybody knows, and uh, it, uh, it's, it, it's uh, very, very powerful. But what I'm working on now is a, a product that I've uh, applied for a patent. They actually take the, the disposables, the knives, forks, and spoons, and uh, create a, a serving piece by hooking them together and you can handle your food with the tongue. And uh, if your hands are dirty or there's a sanitation issue, whatever, the food item is too hot. But uh, it, we can print on those uh, shafts and uh, create um, an improvement on items that haven't been improved on in I don't know how many hundreds of years, knives, forks, and spoons. So... Um, we, we can print, I was listening to Terry with creative business impressions. We, we can print on the, on the uh, bottom of the handle, uh, return for a 10% discount off your next meal. So they're actually promoting business. In a, there's 561 billion uh, disposables used each year. In the United States, there's 10 million, 10.1 million disposables. These are collectibles. These, these are actually advertising um, novelties that households will collect to set their own table with, and we're going to migrate into the metal. So we're going to be able to set the table with these, and you'll be able to move food around from one plate to another. They're good in buffets, at catering, at parties. We're going to put them in grocery stores for picnics. We're going to print uh, uh, logos on them and uh, special events like birthday cakes and Santa Claus's face and you can turn a Kentucky Fried Colonel and et cetera. We'll make them collectibles and keep them out of the rivers and streams. We save napkins. We wouldn't believe this is, uh, if you were not in this business, you wouldn't be looking at the pennies like this. But, you know, the saying, take care of the pennies and the dollars, uh, take care of your pennies and the dollars, take care of themselves. These napkins, as people grab handfuls of these napkins because their hands are all dirty, uh, it costs you 10, 15, 20 cents a meal. If I can mm -hmm. cut back on that, I've uh, saved the tree, so to speak. And um, uh, how do we reach you? How can we uh, reach you? Because we're going to wrap this up. Okay, so uh, I'm at uh, I'm in Miami here, Miami Beach. I'm in <clears throat> excuse me nine seven one three two two thirty six eighty six nine seven one three two two thirty six eighty six. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All right, we come yeah. to the end of our hour. Uh, I want to thank everybody for a great conversation. And just remind everybody to please be here on time. It makes it a lot easier for everybody so we can keep everybody within an hour. And uh, have a great weekend. If, if anybody would like to join our meeting, <laughs> give us a call at 561-620-8888 or visit our website at trnusa.com. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.